Welcome to DCS and this fine morning we are going to take a look at the Saab Yas 39 Gripen mod for DCS. This mod is an independent project based on the VSN flight model and while the er initial release has separate air-to-air -air and air-to-ground versions, um, the they are apparently planning to make sure that there is going to be a standalone version in the future that uh, will not require any Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft and will be able to do swing roll operations. Now, as you can see, we are parked here on Syria and I thought we could go through the liveries in just a little bit. So we have the Brazilian Navy Fictional. I've always liked this one. It's, it's a little bit different. Meant for use on carriers. A clean Swedish one wi without any serial number there. Uh, the Czech Air Force. The Czech Air Force Samurai. But I don't really see how if it's any different really. I don't know if that's a bug or not. Uh, we have a desert livery with an A version serial number for some reason. Uh, dig, dig cam, this was on the proposed C Grip and Carrier version, uh, primarily aimed at the Brazilian and Indian navies. The forest version has a vegan esque scheme and was in use as a celebratory skin in the last days of the Grip and A model. So, the, while the serial number doesn't fit the C version, it fits the skin at the very least. So, Hungarian Air Force, South African Air Force, the Splinter Camo from the Gripen Next Generation test flight, Winter 37, same Splinter Camo, just different colors, and Royal, Royal Thai Air Force with their little Mako shocks right over there. So. I think we're gonna pick the clean one, and we have loaded with brimstone laser guided missiles. Now, I'm actually not sure if the brimstone actually has seen any service on any griefing so far, and we are simply just going to start rolling. Now, the first thing you will want to do in terms of this. Uh, modification when you get it is to absolutely be sure about your controls because the controls aren't set and in some cases will interfere with your other operations which is frankly just annoying so for this reason I had to ch change my trim I had to change my TDC I had to change my uh, my rudder so it wouldn't be on my throttle and more and it was just annoying to have to deal with I'm not gonna say too much about the cockpit it's not clickable at the moment but I think this is one of the areas where they are going to improve in the future so I've gotta say that whatever I say about the cockpit is bound to be uh, is bound to be outdated m most likely by the time you see this unless you see it in like the next couple of weeks after the model is released so but the screens are nice it provides nice information but as you can see not clickable at this time I didn't really expect it to be either so uh, there's no disappointment going on on that school at any rate so we have set up a couple of targets close to Beirut so that's where we are going to be flying we're going to set up our weapons in the meantime We got the brimstone ready to go. Laser systems are on. Launch override is set. A 
I'm not sure if the RB98 Iris T is actually working at this point. Because uh, the uh, SU25 avionics are a bit tricky in that regard. So we're going to try and stick to the brimstone at this time. So we got the TDC on the central panel here and we are going to find our targets close to Beirut where there, they have been kind enough to donate a number of TU-55 uh, tanks for us to blow up, which is very nice indeed. Syria is looking nice this morning. Slowing down a bit, and eyes on the TVC. We got a launch override. Missile is away. So apparently the Brimstone appears to be using the Vicar model. And uh, seems a little bit unstable in the air right now. Uh, but it seems to have stabilized a bit. Especially after the rocket burned out. And we were obviously not close enough for that to be a solid hit. Fire. Well, that's better. The tank is moving. And we launched at a little bit too close of an angle there, so obviously that wouldn't work. But so far the Brimstone seems to be based heavily on the Vicar missiles, which is not necessarily a bad thing, because they work essentially the same. The Brimstone is, of course, a little bit more advanced than that, but I don't actually m begrudge them of using the obvious solution in terms of gameplay implementation, and the Vicar is very easy to use, so... I'm not act I'm not gonna give him shit over that. So we got the target. Fire. Yeah, so that missile went utterly wild. So I think we got, what we're going to do is we are actually going to switch to the anti-aircraft version and see how different that one feels compared to this one. We are airborne in the air-to-air -air version and we are on with the RB-98 Iris-T as well as the RB-101 Meteor, as they are known in the Swedish Air Force. So these, the Meteors are long-range missiles, and the Iris-T are obviously the new generation of heat seekers. So we are going to have a look, see, yeah, we got radar contact. 
and we are going to just give them some of that meteor just to be extra nice to them. Uh, one thing you should be aware of is that weapon fire and weapon release are different, so weapon fire will fire your gun, and weapon release will obviously fire your missile. So, we got a meteor away at them, and we'll see how it works against a simplistic MiG-21. And, uh, so far it appears like the MiG is either evading, or... Yeah, I can see the MiG right now. The MiG is essentially evading, trying to go low, trying to evade my fire. That didn't really work out well for him. So we got a secondary target up ahead. Missile away. So obviously the Meteor so far is pretty damn easy to use. Not sure if that missed or what happened. But I do, I do actually think that one missed. Missile away. So someone is locking on to me, and that, that shouldn't come as a surprise. But we managed to score a kill on one of the targets at any rate, so... Let's turn around and see what else we can find. Obviously, using this aircraft to pluck MiG-21s is a bit of... A bit overkill. I mean, it's not really a fair fight. But I just want to test out the weapon systems, see how... Oh, looks like we got one on our tail. So let's test that over G to capacity. Let's see exactly how much we can push this. Okay, so obviously we can't actually push this aircraft too much. And you know what? I'm actually very happy about that. I'm very happy about the fact that I'm not allowed to do whatever I choose with the aircraft. That the aircraft has an envelope that I can't exceed. So obviously that is that is actually one thing that made me a bit happy about this. And obviously it made that MiG-21 very happy as well because he can now brag about having a reap and kill. Now I would just say that one of the things I was going to test is that so far I haven't been able to see if there is a mode for the RB-98 that allows you to use the helmet side just like the Greep and Pilot does. But even if it's not there, I expect it to appear in future versions. Also, for some reason, I also saw that one of the armaments you could have is a dual pylon of AMRAMs, and that is a feature only on the... Um, next generation grievance, if I'm not entirely mistaken. To sum it up, the this mod is not for me. It's It might be for somebody else, and that is why I want to uh, introduce... That is why I want to introduce you to it. That is why I, why I want to show it off. I have the greatest respect for the people doing this, because I've, I've done it myself. If you just look up the Scandinavian Front 2, uh, then you know I've done this myself, and it's not easy. So, big props to the modding team, and I look forward to see how this uh, is going to evolve in the future. And uh, hopefully it might even be something that I might be able to enjoy so someday, but as of right now, I, I just fell into the study sim rabbit hole. And I don't mind when my study sims are easy, like the JF-17. The JF-17 and I are the best of friends. Uh, but uh, just this thing of flying flaming cliffs free aircraft is getting old for me. So, obviously I'm not really the target demographic for this mod. But uh, as we come into our little landing here, 
I feel that I can safely say that the first release was a f the first step in the right direction. And I hope they keep it up that way. So, as I now will have to start my escape and evasion maneuvers, take care. I'll see you around.